Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning into my classic car, home of the certified car nut. Well, this week we're in Colorado Springs for the Rocky Mountain Concord de Elegance held here at the beautiful Broadmoor Hotel. Now, this is only the second year for the Concorde, but they have managed to assemble an absolutely world-class array of vehicles. Couple that with a beautiful backdrop like the Rocky Mountains and a stunning setting like the Broadmoor, and you've got all the ingredients for an absolutely fabulous event. Let's get around and check a few of these babies out. How you doing? Good, Dennis. A little busy right now, but thanks a lot for coming. <laughs> well, I'm glad you could take the time. I mean, it really is. It's a fabulous show. But where we are right now is, is really the, um, th this is some of the car clubs that also yeah. participate. How's that work? It's, yeah, we've kind of developed a, a car show within a concours itself. Uh, I felt that the, the car clubs themselves uh, are really the grassroots for all the collecting that going on in the first place. And they're the ones that are really the basis and the support for it. So we thought, well, let's recognize them. Wow. And we've, they've turned out a lot of really nice cars. What an event. I mean, what a setting. The Broadmoor uh, out here on the golf course. How did you pull this off? With a lot of help. <laughs> a lot of help. A lot of people working. Yeah. And, and the approval of the Broadmoor, uh, it, it, uh, it's come together. It, it's it's just amazing. Well, I know that uh, you know you got a lot of work to do here, and I got a lot of work to do too. But what do you say we look at a few cars and, and, and then get down to business? Sounds like a good deal. All Thanks, right. Thanks, Well, Ed, this is a stunning car. These have always been faves of mine. The dual Gias. This Correct. is a this is a '57, right? Correct. '57 dual Gia. Where did you find this car? Uh, got found this in a barn in Greenwich, Connecticut. It's a barn find. It's a barn find. <laughs> a barn find dual gear. Actual. Wow. Actually, I have the pictures in the barn. Okay. Of the barn and in the barn. Did you have to restore it and everything? Everything had to be redone. Everything. And, and did you do much of that? Uh, did everything except the cosmetics that I can't do myself. The paint and the interior is something I can't do. Yeah, I mean mm -hmm. that, that, that that's art, and I can't do it either. Yes. But you did the rest of it, eh? Everything mechanical, anything, <gasps> to, and, and all the welding that you can't see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the kind of welding yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, stunning. I mean, so you know, so Italian, uh, and in, even in the interior, it's got you know, it's got Italian flair. But there's there's Dodge in there too. Those gauges are almost 56 Dodge, aren't they? They are all 56 Dodge. Oh, really? Except for the, yeah, <laughs> they exactly. are 56 Very Dodge. Good eye, good eye. <laughs> except for the tachometer, the Dodge does not have tachometer. Uh huh. So they produced a tachometer to match the speedometer instrument. Oh, okay. Well, I love the gear shift too. It's almost like a knife sticking down there. But wasn't like 56 Dodge a push button? They were push-button cars, which was a little bit of a challenge for, for dual motors. And what they did is they uh, uh, adapted a shift lever uh -huh. so that it operates the cable Ooh. Uh, that does the shifting. How does that works, work? It works fine. It does, really. It's flawless, fine. yes. Well, I, you know, I love the fins, but it was 57, after mm -hmm. all. I mean, Correct. so you're going to have... And, and are those st stuck on there, or are they all part of the, the body? They started producing the cars in 56, summer of 56, but all the big three came out with their finned cars for 57. So they called Italy and said? Called Italy, add fins. <laughs> poof, it's got fins. Poof, poof, it has fins. And so what engine does this have? This, uh, there was a choice of two motors in that era, uh, the Dodge Wedge or the Dodge Hemi. Uh -huh. This is the Dodge D500 Hemi, 315, 260 horsepower, single four barrel. Let's go have a look at it. Sure. Wow, that's beautiful. And you know, it's actually set quite far back in the car too, isn't it? Uh, the original motor was, you got a very good eye, <laughs> it was up to about here. Yeah. And they, the car did not handle well at all. Mm -hmm. And they actually moved it back. Just weight distribution, right? Weight distribution. And in order, to, well, they, then they found out it hit the steering box. They had to actually move it over. <laughs> so it's over three inches and back Is about Is that right? Inches. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful car. Now, have you been to the Concorde here? Before? The uh, no, Concord? this is my first time to uh, Broadmoor Hotel, the Rocky Mountains. You and can't the, beat no, it. No, <laughs> the weather is perfect. So. And you absolutely have the finest dual gear here. There's no Ed, question about it. <laughs> thanks a lot for Thank bringing you. it up. My pleasure. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, Drew, absolutely stunning. 66 Lamborghini 350 GT, right? Indeed, yes. Wow. I, you know, I don't know that I've ever seen one quite like this. I mean, it's, it's, uh, is this an early one? Very early, very early in the production. Uh, fellow enthusiasts believe uh, because the numbering system early on was a little cattywampus. Uh, Gee, Italian, it, what, it, what are the it, odds? <laughs> <laughs> a couple of bottles of wine, let's build some cars. It's sort of almost an art deco everywhere you look. Mm -hmm. But one of the nicest things, or one of the unique things, 
Um, all of the glass on the car is compound curved. As you look over it, there's a lot of glass, sort of yeah. a big fishbowl rear. Well, I think um, that's what, what, what really drew me to the car, and, I, and it may be this back window. It's, it's just stunning, and you're right, there's so many curves in that, but it really, it really displays the interior. It's just such a gorgeous, very Italian interior. <laughs> and I hadn't noticed until you pointed out the, the engine turn on the steering wheel. It's, it's, yeah. it's gorgeous. Well, interestingly, also the uh, the dials, the printing is actually silk screened onto the glass. Oh, oh yeah. Rather than having the yeah, numbers on the dials themselves, it sets so they out sit in front. Out, oh, very almost as if they're floating. Yeah. Yeah. And under the hood would, of course, be a V12. <laughs> but, but what displacement? Uh, it's 3.5 liters, hence the 350 designation. Ah, uh, uh, yes. So it's a V12, uh, wonderful in its sort of power band has wonderful torque at the low end and very smooth all the way up. Ferraris, as you know, sort of sing when you get only into the upper bands, mm -hmm. but uh, this really comes alive around that 6,500 RPM range. You've got six side draft Weber carburetors, of course, and 12 cylinders, so it's uh, a wonderful piece of Italian engineering. Is it one you drive? Indeed we do. Uh, we spend a lot of time to, taking this on rallies, uh, the uh, Lamborghini Club. Uh, does what we call bull runs, which we'll get together with the local club and we'll run up to places. Uh, we've been to Sedona, a couple of other great places. We have lunch and then come home. Wow, nice addition to the uh, Rocky Mountain Concours here. Are you enjoying yourself? Oh, this is a fabulous event. We came last year just as spectators and had to participate this year. <laughs> I can see why. Drew, you got a beautiful car. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks for bringing Thank it out. You. Lovely. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, Greg, this is a beauty, and I, and I think it's, it's wonderful that the Rocky Mountain Concours has got a, a, a class for historic hot rods. And this is a historic hot rod, right? Yes, it is. Now, when, when was this baby first built? It was originally built in 1948. Wow. Built in California as a fenderless, low boy style. It was channeled and had this track nose, aluminum track nose, hood and side panels. About 1955, it was sold out of California and went up to Washington. Uh-huh and a member of the Grinders Car Club up there bought it. Painted it light blue, called it baby blue, showed it at some of the local shows. He sold it to another member of the <laughs> car club in about 1957. That member took the flathead out of it, put in this uh, Chevrolet 265, which was a crate motor at the time, uh -huh. punched it out to 283, added uh -huh. the intake with the four 94 carburetors. I like that. Put fenders on it because of the rain up there. Yeah. Completed the upholstery, added the roll bar, and uh, pretty much just well, like it was. Well, how did you how did you come to own it? Well, about 2000, I saw the track nose and the hood and side assembly on eBay. Uh huh. And I had another project I was working on. I went ahead and purchased it off of eBay. Got it. Decided I didn't really like it. Put it back on eBay. While I was on eBay, I received an email from an individual, one of the previous owners of the car. He told me he took the nose off of the car and he's still on the car that came off of and give him a call. So I did, and about two years later, I owned the car. So it's, you had the nose, you just had to get the rest of the car to go with exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> it all came back together. Well, I tell you, thanks for bringing her out. Thanks, Dennis. Appreciate it. Great car, buddy. Well, Mark, Concorde de Elegance, a very elegant car. Thank 37 you. Packard, right? Yep. Beautiful car. Now, this is a pretty fairly rare model, isn't it? Yeah, there's only seven known to exist. Three have been restored. Wow. And, and it's, a, it's a 15? 1507, model 1507 V12. Dual uh, side mounts on the tires? Dual side mounted. Mm -hmm. Massive Which headlight buckets? Yep. Yep, Just... massive headlight buckets. Uh, now, the color is really beautiful. Is it, a, is it a correct color? This is called rich loam with gold pinstripe. This is an original color for 37. Ah, just, just a beautiful car. And, and the, the uh, you know, it's such a massive car, but it's a two, a two passenger car, at a least inside. Two passenger car inside. It weighs 5,600 pounds, but it's really quite cozy on the inside. Oh yeah, it is. Now, is that all uh, like hand wood grained? Is that actually a metal that, dash? That is wood grained exact. It's a metal dash, wood grained exactly like original. We do all that work ourselves and the old ink rolling process, My just goodness. like original. It's, it's fabulous. And you've got uh, golf club doors on both sides. Yep, dual golf bag doors. Uh, this was sold to a very affluent person when it was new. No kidding. And a rumble seat still though in a car, an elegant car like this? Yeah, it, they just held on to the nostalgia. It wasn't highly practical. Yeah. Not used very often because it's difficult to get in and out. And you yeah. have to step on the seat to get in and out. Well, it looks pretty cool. It looks great. <laughs> and the, uh, the, the trunk uh, uh, platform. Right. This luggage rack here folds down with just a simple pull of these guys and then they sold a Packard trunk mm. to match the paint originally. 
Packard 12. Packard it's not 12. The eight, it's the That's 12. That's right, Packard 12. Can we take that long walk and go look at it? Sure, you bet. All right. My goodness. That is, that's an absolutely massive engine, isn't it? 1,500 pounds is what the engine and transmission weighs <laughs> really? with all the dressing. What a stunning car. Have you enjoyed the Concord? Absolutely. It's a lot of fun out here. I think everybody's having a great time, and what a fabulous venue, huh? <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And what a fabulous car to have here. Mark, Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks for bringing it out. You bet. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, Barry. This is one of the most stunning cars here, and I don't even know what it is. What am I looking at? Well, like I said before, I, I'm not sure I know what it is. <laughs> but the concept behind the car was to build from scratch yeah. a car that had the look, attitude, uh, sound uh, of an Italian racer from the late 50s, early 60s. It has that look. Okay. Then to marry that with absolutely the utmost in technology underneath. Engine, drivetrain, all of it. Brakes. So, so it's like a tube frame car. Correct. Hand beaten aluminum. It's an aluminum body? It is an aluminum body. Wow, well now, it, it, so how was that marriage of, of old technology to new technology? Well, you know, it was interesting because the trick really was not being able to do a really beautiful aluminum body, as difficult as that is, but to marry 50 years together yeah. and, ha and have it come together. Who okay. did it? Uh, Creative Workshop in Dana Beach, Florida. Jason Winnick and his wife Kim own, own the place. Great master coach builders. And I call around the United States when I had the idea to do something like this. Most people think you're crazy? Oh, they wouldn't even return my call, <laughs> okay? And when I got Jason on the phone, he said, hell, I can build anything. <laughs> That's my kind of guy. <laughs> so he sent me an unbelievably great proposal in writing. And I called him up two days later and said, how much money do you want me to send? So how long did it take? It took uh, right at 20 months. It took a few amount of checks. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we have something here that uh, I can okay. say that no one else, else in the world has. Oh, it is true. Especially. So what's the power plant? It's a BMW, a uh, big 12-cylinder engine with oh. special heads from the factory. So why'd you go Beamer? I mean, reliability, yeah. power. I mean, this thing is a 251-mile-an-hour car. That's nice. Um, and I didn't want someone coming up if, it, if a Ferrari w engine uh, was in it oh, it's a, it's a and replica. saying, well, that's a replica. Well, it ain't a no, replica. Ain't a replica. <laughs> well, can we look at the power plant? Absolutely. I'll go around and help you. Wow. Thoroughly modern. And as you can tell, the engine is set back. Yeah, way back. So that we have a like a almost a 48 to 52 percent ratio of weight. The car weighs 2,300 pounds. Okay. How many horsepower? Throws off about 450, 460. It's a rocket ship. Yeah. Oh, 0 to 60, 3.3. .3. <laughs> wow. You know, I'll never. <laughs> But what a you know what a fascinating uh, creation story. Yeah, it really is. It's it's the car is great, but it's really about having a dream and being able to fulfill it. Yeah, and and that's I mean that's really what you did. You you had a vision and you uh, and you executed it. Well, I didn't execute it. They executed. They executed. Jason, yeah, Jason and his crew. Good execution. Executed. Good vision. Yeah. Well, Barry, what a car, man. Thank man. What Appreciate a car. It. All right. I'm in love. I am too. <laughs> Oh man, we had a fabulous time here at the Rocky Mountain Concord d'Elegance at the beautiful Broadmoor Hotel in Colorado Springs. You know, in just its second year, I would have to honestly say, this event has arrived.